In today's video, I'm gonna talk about the five things that you need to do as soon as you install Divi on your website. Coming up. Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Mac and in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the five things that you need to do as soon as you install Divi on your website. Now, these things I'm gonna talk about are gonna save you time and also make it easy for you to design your websites. Now, before we get started, I'd also like to remind you that if you buy Divi using my affiliate link, I will give you access to my web design formula course, a course that teaches you how to design professional looking websites with Divi. All right, so let's dive in and let's talk about the very, very first thing. So first of all, when you first download Divi, most people wanna go in straight and start building their website. So the very first thing you need to do is to make sure that you install your API key. So what you need to do to install your API key is to head over here to your website where you bought Divi and then log into your members area. So once you log into your members area, you wanna come over here to where it says uh, product downloads and then click where it says my account. So this is where you get your API key. So you just click over here and this will show you your API key. Of course, I'm not gonna show you my API key uh, in this video because uh, now for obvious reasons. All right, so once you've um, copied your API key, next you wanna come over here to your website now and then go to theme options. So here on theme options, you wanna go straight to updates. So you wanna enter your username and API key. So you may be thinking, why do I need to add my API key here? So the most important reason why you may want to add your API key is number one, Divi occasionally puts out updates to enhance the builder and give it more features. So without this API key, you won't be able to get these updates pushed to you automatically. Secondly, it's support. So the API key also gives you access to do remote access support. So without this key, you won't be able to get the uh, support that you may need from the support team. So this is the main reason why you may want to do this. And also, there's also a feature called the rollback to a previous version. Again, this needs the API key for this to function well. And also, I almost forgot, pre-made layouts. In order for you to download the pre-made layouts, which are also important by the way, you need to have this API key installed. All right, so let's move on to the next item. And the next item we're gonna be talking about here is the color palette. So after you've entered all your API key, you want to come back over here to general. And this is our color palette here. So again, why do we need to enter our colors for our color palette? It's important because as you start designing our website, it is very, very time consuming to go in and add your hexadecimal value every single time you want to change an item on your website. So by entering your colors over here, this sets your colors throughout your whole website. So every time you go to any page or any design in your website, you will see the new color palette that you would have entered right here in the theme options. All right, so the tool I use to choose my colors is coolers.co. So over here, what you need to do is to generate your color palette once you're happy with it. You can come over here, copy the hex value, come over here to your site, and then you can go in and start adding all your hexadecimal values in here. So you can see here, it is changing right away. So let's go ahead and add a few colors here and then show you how this works on your website. So I'm not gonna go in and, and add all of them because obviously the process of adding these colors is very straightforward. As you can see, I'm just copying here and then coming back to my site and adding the, uh, the values. Let's do one more and then we move on to the actual design and show you how this works. All right, so you can see I've added, I've added these first four colors. Let's add white to this as well. There we go. So now I've added white and we may also need like a gray over here. So let's add three, 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 three. There we go, so now we have a gray. So once you've entered these, all you have to do now is click on save. Now let's build a brand new page and see if these colors will be shown every time we try to stylize any modules, elements, or any row on our website. So now that I've saved this, I'm gonna come over here to pages and then click on add new. So I'm just gonna call this page, you know, pretty much anything. And this is the first time I've installed Divi here. So, all right, so uh, let's just call this page test and then we're gonna use the Divi builder. So this is the first time I've installed Divi on this website. So we are going to get this walkthrough, but I'm just gonna say start building. Right, so uh, now that I have these three options, let's just go ahead and build from scratch so I can show you how this works. 
So let's say you want to add some colors uh, on your website. So if you come over here to your section settings, for example, let me just snap this over to the left. Now, if I go to background, you notice that now all my colors are now here. The colors that I initially entered when I was setting up my colors in the theme options. Okay, so that's the background. So let's say I want to go with this color here. Save that. And now let's add, uh, let's say a text module. Right, so let's say I need to customize my colors here. I can just go over to design text. And again, you can see here that my colors are all showing here. So I can go straight away and choose the color that I want to use and then save. So as you can see, the color palette is really, really powerful if you set it up right from the get-go. This will save you a lot of time moving forward. So this is how I would set up all my colors. All right, so let's move on to the, the next item and that is the theme builder. So the theme builder is very important because everything that you set in your theme builder is going to be applied across your whole website. So why design the whole website first and then go back to the theme builder? But as I'm mentioning all these things, it doesn't mean that if you've already designed your website, you can't use all these tips that I'm giving you. No, you can always go back and add all these things that I'm giving you in this video. But if you're building a, a brand new website, then it's ideal that you start off this way. All right, so as you can see here, we have this footer area. To be honest, it doesn't look really good and I'm sure you can agree with me. So this is where you want to go in and go straight to your theme builder. So I'm gonna come over here. In fact, let me just save this. Okay, now I'm gonna go back over here to the dashboard and go straight all the way down here to the theme builder. So you may be thinking, well, why do I need the theme builder? As I mentioned a few moments ago, everything that you set up here is going to be applied pretty much across your whole website, saving you a lot of time. So now that we don't have, we can see we don't have a footer on our website. So if I come over here now to global footer, I can build my global footer for my website over here. So I'm just going to do a quick example here. I'm not going to go in full in and full on and design a uh, footer here. I just want to show you quickly how easy it is to build one. So I'm going to click here on build from scratch and um, let's start with a single column and let's add a text module. Okay, so in our text module, I'm just going to say our, our business and this is just an example by the way and then i'm going to add my links here okay so i'm just going to highlight this and just add a blank link for now so i'm going to come over here give this a blank link Click okay move on to services do the same thing add a blank link okay so you can see here i have in fact this one here hasn't worked I'm not sure why let's go back and try and do it again there we go. Right, so now it is over here and we can make this bold if we if we wanted to. So you can see here, this is the first part of my footer here. So I am going to save this and then I'm just gonna give this a background color and let's go with, all right, so we're gonna go with that as our background uh, color for our footer and then save. I mean, we can go further and customize the text here, change the colors and so on. But uh, you know what? I'm just keeping things simple here. Now I'm going to go into my row settings and then I'm just going to duplicate this a few times. Right, so I'm going to save now. Save one more time. Now remember, the footer that we had initially when I created my test page was not very good. So let's see what happens now. I'm just going to close this and then save changes. Right, so now let's take a look at our website and I'm going to do this in a new tab. Now. When I go over here, you can see our footer has changed. And just like that, even if you had a thousand pages on your website, the footer will be applied across your thousand pages on your website. So this is the power of using the theme builder. You can also do the same with your headers. You can also build your posts. You can build e-commerce pages, archive pages, and so on. So using this theme builder here is very, very powerful. If you wanted to add a new template, you can come over here to add new template, and then you can choose what template you need to create for your website. All right, so now that we've spoken about the templates, now let's move on to the fourth item, and this is the global settings. So as we design our websites, in fact, let me just head over here to one of our pages. So I'm just gonna go to all pages, 
And uh, let's go to the test one because this is the one that we're working with. So before I can go in and talk about this setting, which you need to do right from the get go before you start designing Divi, I want to give you a scenario here. When it comes to adding modules or um, sections or even uh, rows on your website, they come in with default settings. And this is pretty much just the out of the box setting that Elegant Themes comes up with. So in most cases, when we build our pages, we have to go in and do the same tasks over and over and over again. And this is time consuming. And uh, the next tip I'm going to share with you now is really, really powerful. It's called global settings. I can create just one button and stylize, stylize it. And then that button now will be applied or that design of that button will be applied pretty much across the whole website. Now, I'm just giving button here as an example, but you can use this with pretty much anything on your website. So let me show you how that works. So what we're going to do here is uh, let's add a new section, right? So we're going to start here with, uh, let's start with a button. So I'm going to add my button here. So you can see here, this is the default styling of the button. And like I said, you'll need to go in each and every time to stylize it every time we need to use it. So to save you a lot of time, what you need to do is to change this into a global item. So what I need to do now is to go in and uh, design this button. So in order for us to see the changes, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this and uh, add it over here on the bottom. Right. So what we're going to do now is to go in and stylize the top one. So I'm going to give it a blank link and then I'm going to come over here to design button and activate custom styles for button. So with that now, I'm going to give this a background color. So let's say across the board, I need to have, in fact, let's use something a bit different here. Let's go with that for our background color. And for the text, we are going to change this to light. And then we're going to continue here with the alignment. If we need to have our buttons all centered, we can just make it centered over here. All right. So now that I have that all set, the next step now is to go to our border width and maybe I want to remove the border width altogether. And if I need to do any more uh, changes to this, I can just go in and uh, customize that. So let's say here, I just need to make my font weight bold and let's make it all caps as well. All right, so let's say this is the style of the button that I need across my whole website. As you can see here, I've gone in and I've applied a few clicks in order for me to come up with this style. But to save us time, what you, what you want to do now, once you've designed this is to right click on the top here and then say, make styles default. And then I'm just going to say yes. And you can see now this one here has this default style applied. So if I save that and then let's say down the line, I'm working on my website and I need to create another button. Now notice what happens. So I'm going to click here and say button. And then as soon as I choose my button, you can see here it has the same style. So I have saved myself a lot of time going in, changing the colors, making sure everything is looking you know, right every time I add my button. So I know I'm using the button here as an example, but this can apply to modules. It can apply to uh, pretty much anything uh, on your website. The most important thing here is just to make sure once you've designed it, you right click and then say make styles default. So once you've done that, you know, all, all your buttons on your website will be default uh, to that style that you've just created. And also any future buttons that you're going to create are also going to have this same uh, default. All right, so let's move on and talk about the fifth setting that you need to have on your website before you start designing your website. And this time it's your fonts. So as you're designing your website, it is very important that you choose your fonts right from the get go, because what I've noticed when I was doing some website reviews is people use different types of fonts. And this does not make your website look professional. So you need to make sure your website looks really, really professional and you need to set up your fonts right from the get-go. Now, there's a website here that uh, helps you uh, choose your fonts. I think it's called a font pair. Let me see if that's the one. And yes. So this uh, website here helps you choose fonts that work well together. So you can see here you have um, Laura and uh, Meriwether. And these, as you can see here, they work really well together. We also have this one here, Prosa Libre and Open Sans. So you can look over here for inspiration to see how these fonts are looking. And also you can choose specific layouts here. And you can see here we have different types of uh, combinations that you can use. So once you choose your fonts from here, these are the fonts that you need to apply to your website. In fact, you can also add them onto your um, 
theme builder and these will be applied pretty much across your whole website. So these are the main things that you need to do to your website to make sure that your workflow is much, much easier and this will save you a lot of time moving forward and also ensuring that your website is going to look professional. So that's all I have for you in today's video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.